Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my channel, APM Scootery. Hey, um, I did an intro, um, I know it was kind of long-winded or whatever, but I had mentioned that um, some people were, you know, down on Chinese scooters, but I, I, I never really mentioned uh, just a couple things. Um, at least some of the junk ones I saw. Um, if you uh, change your oil and your gear oil, and um, you change the cheap hoses and whatnot that they put on the scooters when they come in from China. That usually solves most of your problems. Regular maintenance, um, it's a big part of keeping those things running. The GY6 engine, that's a damn durable little engine. Um, you can beat the hell out of that thing. Um, but just like a car or anything else, you gotta take care of it, you gotta change the oil. Um, change your oil, change your gear oil, make sure their tire pressure is good. Uh, basic maintenance, that's the key to keeping these things running. Um, you know, don't leave it outside all year long for the whole thing to rust and then wonder why it runs like shit or, sorry, crap, you know, or it doesn't start or you have gas in it and you leave the gas in it for a year and you decide, well, now I want to ride it and it doesn't work and then you complain that it's a piece of junk. Well, no, it's kind of on you. Enough of that. Okay, so I've been getting a lot of questions about uh, wiring, um, connectors, um, what do I use, uh, because that is my job, that's my specialty um, for my, from, you know, for making a living. Uh, it's been 27 years I've been messing with this stuff. So I'm going to go over a couple things here and a couple ways to tie in or fix broken wires. Um, take a look in here real quick. Let me grab my bag. I have some things sitting here. I want you to take notice that I have a digital soldering iron. Do you need a digital soldering iron? No, you do not. Um, you can actually buy some cheaper ones. Sorry, this is a mess. A little unorganized. Um, digital soldering irons are nice because I can control the temperature. Now, anywhere between 350 and 400 is what I use to solder copper wires together. As you can see, there's a temperature gauge on here. Um, I can control the temperature. So I just turned it to exactly at 400. So that is uh, one soldering iron. Then there's another that I use if I'm inside a tight spot or a vehicle, and this is called a butane soldering iron. So you can flip it on, you know, turn your gas on, make sure I can hear it snap it and taking a look to see if it lights and it lights up so the issue you have with that is you can't really control the temperature but most of the time you get the gist that a little bit over halfway is somewhere around 400 degrees you can buy these things on eBay you can buy them on Amazon um, I personally don't sell them and speaking of that soon I will have um, a GY6 uh, website up uh, gotta put that in there uh, support your small businesses um, but anyways this is a learning channel right now so let me um, get to it this is a cover that goes over so don't burn my hand uh, these things get hot another thing I have is a portable torch this is also made by a company called power pro turn it on click that sucker on okay so what do I use this for well depending on what I'm doing sometimes I use it to to use it against uh, to for shrink tube which I have here and shrink connectors heat shrink connectors which I'm going to show you uh, and I also use it for a soldering connection to a copper lug now there's those big uh, what is it uh, benzites or whatever the big huge flame torches. Um, I actually do use those when I'm using really large gauge wire. I actually work with wire as big as triple lot gauge, which is <laughs> insane. Um, this is somewhere like uh, 14 gauge, 16 gauge, 14 gauge. So how the wire gauges work is the higher the number, 22, 18 gauge, which are these pink colored connectors, 14, 16 gauge, which is the blue connectors, and 10-12 gauge, which is the yellow connectors, um, are of course 
the diameter of the wire size. Uh, so the smaller the number, meaning this is four gauge that actually trimmed down to eight gauge for something I'm going to show you. This is four gauge wire. So as you can see, it's pretty thick. Okay? Um, so you take a look at that. Now this is stuff I use for cars. Um, and then compare that to the, um, you know, 1416 gauge. Hell, this might even pass as 18 gauge. Um, but it's supposed to be 1416. That's another thing. You know, watch your wires where you get them from. Uh, of course, everything almost is made in China. Um, so I'm going to go over a couple quick tools before I get into exactly how to do some of this stuff and, and hopefully it helps you out. You need your solder. Now, I use um, a 0.8 millimeter solder. Well, why do you use such a thin solder? Because there's actually solder that if you go into the big retail stores, you're going to see that they sell thick rosin core solder. The melting point is much higher. It's, it's much harder to use. Um, I actually order this stuff, <laughs> it says it's made in China, um, I actually order this from Amazon, uh, it's really cheap and I get the big spools because I do solder so much, I believe in soldering, um, mechanical crimping or using crimpers like this, you know, sometimes it's a necessity, it'll, it'll get you through, but if I can solder a connection, uh, I will solder before I crimp. Um, that being said, let me go over a couple things that I use. I use a knife. Obviously, it's just a quick blade. Uh, I don't have my tool here to strip the thicker wire. I'd show you. Uh, maybe I'll do that on another video when I'm working on the scooter. Um, these are tool aids. And I'm telling you, guys, if you do electrical wiring on your scooter or electrical wiring in your car or whatever, best things ever made I'm telling you right now um, and I'm just gonna give you a quick example you ready so I'm gonna put the wire in I have a depth chart I'm just gonna put it in about a half an inch squeeze BAM wire stripped no missing copper now another way to do it is of course I have a lot of snap-on stuff um, these are made by snap-on you can take the wire go into its gauges and they're listed on here 10, 14, uh, 18, 16 so let me go on in here to the 14, 16 pull it, bam, stripped okay a couple different ways that you can do that um, tool aid you can buy these man they're, you, I get them from my tool guy I mean it's simple that way um, but you can get these online it's, they're made by tool aid Tool Aid is not paying me, but if you happen to run across <laughs> Tool Aid to watch this, uh, you know, look me up. I've been using your stuff for 20 years. Um, a good set of cutters. Now these are snap-on. These are little tiny diagonal cutters. They are sharp. When I get in and I need to cut a zip tie flush, if you take a look, these suckers get right in and they cut flush. Um, it makes it easy when you're in an awkward situation and you can't get in there to cut a zip tie or cut a wire. This gets in there, no problem, every time. Okay? Um, I do got a vice set up here. I don't have it mounted, but what I have in here is a copper lug. Now, I happen to use copper lugs a lot if I'm doing. Uh, you know, big upgrades for customers' uh, vehicles, um, and even with this scooter, which is going to be one of the episodes where I go through a bunch of steps to upgrade the scooter's wiring because the scooter's wiring is cheap, um, plain and simple. The connectors aren't that great. Um, they hold. I mean, they're not that bad, but they hold. But I'm going to revamp mine and make it a lot better. So, that being said, let's get on with this. Uh, Actually, no, one more thing, sorry. This is a, uh, another style crimper from Iowis. Um, 
and is used for a special type of connector. Um, and I do not have any laying around to show you. Um, what it does is it actually makes a hexagon or whatever that is type of crimp around the wire and it allows it to fit into let's say you have a uh, 14 gauge opening that needs uh, something put in it and screwed down um, it, it, it actually it actually crimps that metal down to the shape of the hexagon and it keeps it from being able to be pulled off if I can find one um, I'll show you. It's actually made for what they call wild, uh, wire ferrules, um, but we'll we'll get to that, I guess, if I use one on the scooter. But we'll see if I even need to do it. But just wanted to show you. Um, and then also another type of wire stripper. Sorry, another one keeps going here. What this is is it's made by Vice Grip. You can buy them at the the retail stores, the uh, tool stores. Um, Home Depot or Lowe's. What it is is you have an adjustable pull on here to make it tighter or less stress on the wire. So obviously you want some stress, but if you put your wire in between the two, make sure this is down tight because you're actually going to need it tighter for the smaller gauge wire. Strip it, bam. Okay? And I explained to you why I use this uh, for certain wire connections. Uh, that being said, I'm going to get with the crimping. Two types of crimpers, okay? If you take a close look, I'm going to try to put this up um, and see if she can zoom in on this. You'll see most crimpers have a tooth and a non-tooth. Tooth and a non-tooth. If you take a look, the tooth will tell you, let's see if you can do it, if I can read it up right, it'll say bear. Well, what bear is, is a non-insulated connector. This is an insulated connector. So if you can get connectors like this that aren't, that aren't insulated, even though this isn't one of them, this is actually made for soldering, um, you, can, you can mechanically crimp these, but I don't, I don't like doing that. Um, then you have a, what they call, a non or an insulated side, sorry, non-insulated would be the bear. So the non-insulated uses the tooth. Um, I've been known to actually use the tooth because sometimes I believe it gives you a better crimp, but it is on both types of crimpers. Now these are ones, um, these are actually Cornwell, which is a tool company. Um, it says the same thing. Its tooth actually has an indentation so if you stick a bare connector in there and the wire is in there, it actually has almost like an M shape. So it'll crunch down both sides as you squeeze and fold over your wire holding it into place. Uh, I don't have any of those with me. Sometimes I use them for, for speaker terminals or whatnot um, and, and certain types of spade connectors. But um, for this, we're not going to use that. We're going to use what they call a insulated crimping side. So, that being said, I'm going to get started here. I'm just going to take a basic connector. Now, these are heat shrink connectors. So, that's kind of like a dual thing here. What it does, not only does your wire go into its connector and you crimp it, but you are also able to shrink, as you can see it kind of blows out a little bit, you're able to shrink that around the wire and some glue will ooze out and that will secure the connection or waterproof it, water tighten it. Um, you know, does it really? I don't know, but it sure as heck makes a good connection. So I like heat shrink connectors if I have to use a mechanical connection. Here is a non heat shrink connection. I'm going to move my finger away. As you can see, this is a 14 to 16 gauge connector. Um, it is called a male disconnect. The reason why it's male is inside it is the male plug. The female obviously would be the opposite. So if I go into my little bag of goodies here, let me see if I have one. Uh, I do. I don't know. Let me look. Yeah, I got a red one. So there's the female side. Okay? So obviously they would join together. Now obviously these are two different sizes so 
not really going to work in this application. But you get what I'm saying. There's a male and a female. Uh, and sometimes they're used to join wires. Do I use them for that? Mm, not really. I'm in a pinch, maybe. If it's a, a quick fix that somebody doesn't want to pay for me to take the time to solder something properly and get it done, uh, yeah, then I'll use a mechanical butt connector or I'll use a male and female disconnect. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to start off with your basic crimps. Like I said, this thing's sharp as hell, that little cutter. So I'm going to put a mechanical connection, non-heat shrink, on this wire. So I strip maybe about a quarter of an inch, let it go up through till it hits the actual opening and can't go any further. If you use too small of a wire, it's going to go right up through and go right out. And you're going to crimp on the insulation and you're not going to crimp on the wire and you're going to plug something in and it's not going to work and you're going to go, what the hell? Uh, take a look at your wire size. Make sure you're using the right thing. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to crimp on the insulated crimping side. It's just simple, man. This is really simple. Squeeze. Okay. Connection is on. It ain't going anywhere. Okay. Um, now I'm sure if I pull hard enough, I can pull it off. That's the only problem with sometimes mechanical connections. Uh, the person doesn't crimp hard enough, and even when I was when I train guys, um, I'll go back and check their connections, and if they're using mechanical crimping uh, like this, and I pull it off, you know, I get ticked off and make them do it again. Um, most of the time, if you crimp properly, these things will stay on. I'm not knocking them. They're actually pretty good, okay? Um, just use the right tools, man, the right tools. That is the key to this stuff. Um, let me cut this off. Now I'm going to go through, see if I can strip again. Tool laid, best thing ever. Go through. This time I'm going to use the heat shrink connector. Right in it goes. Now, you can see a little bit sticking out, and that's okay. Uh, it stopped. Now, on this one, use the mechanical connection on the insulated terminal side of the crimper. Squeeze, right? See that? See what I'm saying? So, why didn't that work? I'll tell you why. Because the heat shrink connectors, and I don't care what anybody says, are not the same as just the regular standard mechanical connectors, connections. Now this thing fit right inside, okay? It fit, no problem. So I'm gonna grab another one, 18 to 22 gauge. That shows you how off this wire size is. It's supposed to be 16 to 14 gauge. All right, now, you say, well, what do you do? Well, now I'm going to use the tooth. The tooth is for non-insulated connectors, but for this one, I'm going to use I'm going to use the tooth. And I'm going to put it right in the middle because if you look closely when you get these connectors, you're going to see there's a joint in the center. So I try to place that tooth in the center of the joint and I squeeze like hell. Right? Oh, man, look at that. Doesn't come off. Amazing, right? So you can use either end. I, I usually, if it's heat shrink connectors, I'm going to use the tooth. If it is just a regular general connector that you buy in bulk at the auto stores or Home Depot, I hate giving them credit, or the other, let's just say the retail home outlets. Um, you, the mechanical ones, these, these ones here without the heat shrink, they work just fine using the insulated side. But as you see, I use the heat shrink connector and actually use the tooth. Now if you take a look, it made an indent. So it smashed in both metal sides. So now what? Well, now I'm going to take, you can do it two ways. You can use a heat gun or you can use your little torch. I'm gonna to use the little torch for this one. So I'm gonna turn it on, flame it. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just going to gently go around. Don't keep it in one spot too long because you will burn the wire. Real easy. 
go through. You can actually start to see the glue come out. careful because that tip gets hot and voila heat shrunk and mechanically connected so not only do you have a mechanical connection I'm sure it's not hot because it does get the whole thing hot but you actually have some heat shrunk support right here okay that's gonna make for a great connection um, again uh, I find that it's kind of like the cheaper way to go um, but listen I'm not knocking anybody if they want to do it this way heat shrink, uh, heat shrink connectors are great okay and you're also going to see that I have heat shrink over here and and I'm going to get to that in a minute so I'm going to cut this connector off and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a splice an actual straight line splice connection using solder I'm not going to use a butt connector you guys know what butt connectors are these are butt connectors. They're, this is a heat shrink one, but nonetheless, it's a mechanical connection where you would slide one end of your wire in, take your crimp, well, you know, crimp it down, what the hell, you know, I'll do it, I got wire. Squeeze it. And I'm telling you, it's the heat shrink connector, so I'm using the tooth. Squeeze it, one side's connected. Strip your other side, tool aid again, love them. Put the wire into your other side, make sure it goes all the way in. I'm so used to doing this, I'm gonna get it and do it kind of fast. Um, I'm using the tooth. Okay, squeeze it in. Right? That's a butt connection, a butt splice. Okay? Um, I'm not going to heat it. I just showed you what a heat shrink connection does. It actually would shrink on both sides, left and right, and it would make a pretty solid connection. But what I want to get at here is I'm going to show you how to splice soldering okay so I'm gonna strip a little longer let's probably say maybe three quarters of an inch and if you look at the tool aid that I'm using there's actually markers on there now, some people say they fan the wires out you know and then they put them together they, they fan the wires out like this and then they interlock the two wires together and twist it I'm just putting them together I'm crisscrossing them and I'm twisting them, making sure that they overlap. I know my big fingers are in the way, but you'll see when I'm done. Okay? So that you have a straight line. Okay? Then what I do is move this out of the way here. Actually, use it to set it up on something. Okay, so I'm going to take my soldering iron and I'm going to use the digital one because I like the digital one. Not that I don't like the other one, there's just no need to break it out. It's the same thing, uh, just I control the settings. And I'm going to what they call tin the wire. So I'm going to go through, actually, Here we go. So we're getting some solder on the tip. Actually, I actually have to bring that up a little bit. I'll just shake it off. So then what I do is I hold the soldering iron tip underneath the wire. Well, that didn't work real well, guys. Hang on. Try to want to keep it from moving. And I touch the tip of the soldering iron and 
until I see the solder start to melt. And what I'm trying to do is actually heat the copper up. temperature gauge is off. Really, what I'm doing is running the solder across the wire so that it soaks in. off but well, actually I'm pulling the wire off of the thing sorry about that both ends are open so um, so then what I do is once the wire is completely soldered through take my little cutters that I use for everything this is a piece of uh, heat shrink I believe it's either two to one or three to one. Um, I don't know, I get this from a supplier online. Um, you can get them from Amazon. I go over that connection. So that kind of irks me about the solder wire. I don't know what the hell that's all about. Oh, then um, the other way of really you're supposed to do it is, this is a Steinle heat gun. You actually can use the heat gun it heats up really quick, so be careful. I mean, you don't have to buy a heat gun or this brand, but it's a really high-end brand. Um, because I do so much on my job, I'm actually holding my hand away. You can see it. It's pretty cool. I can change the temperature. So I can make it go up or down. I'm at 360. So I'm going to hold it on to here. Turn it around. And you'll see it, that it's shrinking to the wire and over my connection. Set that off because the tip of that thing gets hot too, so be careful. At least messing with any heat gun. Now, you have a unbelievably strong connection, okay? So that's just a straight splice between two wires. So what if um, you need to join a wire, like you're doing something on your scooter that requires you to connect to an ignition or to one of the light wires, um, and it kind of shows, you know, that you're supposed to uh, connect it in parallel, you know, and you're kind of looking at the schematic going, well, how am I supposed to do that? Well, let me cut some of this off and I'll show you. I use what is called a military splice or a T-splice. That's where this comes in. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna open up the center of the wire. Let's just say this goes to your lights or whatever, you know, and, and you're, you gotta hook up uh, your, your alarm to your lights, uh, one of the scooter alarms or whatnot. I'm working with um, Mike from NCY has been asking me some questions, sent me schematics on the alarm. So one of the connections I saw was connecting splicing to your lights. And it could be anything, it doesn't have to be the alarm. It could be you need to repair or run a new wire to whatever, one of the accessories 
all the stuff they sell for the scooters, who knows. This is a right angle pick. It can be straight, it can be right angle, it can be a pick, it doesn't matter. As long as you can get in between the wire to make a hole, right? So I try to go in between the middle of it because it's to get an even amount of wires, right? So there's my hole, right? And this is, let's say this is the factory light wire. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my whatever aftermarket wire that has to connect to the light wire, strip it. Now I like to give it about three quarters of an inch to an inch long. The wire actually goes through the center of the splice Pull your wire at like 90 degrees. That's how I like to do it. Then I like to close the hole up with my fingers. Then I take the remaining wire and I wrap it around it. And actually wrapping around it closes the hole up. So I like to call that tie wrapping, right? So now you have your light wire or whatever, and then you have your secondary wire that needed connected to that light wire for whatever reason. Um, or whatever you're doing. Look at that. That's called a T-splice or a military splice. So you can do one or two things. You can actually leave it like this, take some tape, I like to use, I'm going to tell you now, if you use tape on your scooter, use 3M Super 33. It's expensive but it is by far the best stretchy tape available. So let me go like this, I'm gonna show you. So I'm gonna hold those two wires together. I'm gonna go about a quarter to a half inch before, and I'm gonna pull and twist, pull and twist, pull and twist, until I have a nice, flat, tight tape line, and look. Now, I wish someone was here, but you're not pulling that apart, man. It's not coming out. It is not coming out, period. So let me show you another way of doing that. So we're going to do pretty much the same thing so that you get the hang of this here. Cut a wire off. Cut a wire off. I'm going to use my splicers. I do not use this for anything else. I don't use it for crimping. No way in hell. Uh, they're too thin and they, they never work. I use it for what they call splicing the middle of a wire. So that's how I do it. That's what I use this for. 99.9% .9 of the time. Right? So I'm going to grab my other wire. Give that about a three quarter of an inch. Twist it as I'm pulling off the actual insulation. Go ahead and get my pick. Make a nice hole. Bring my wire through. Put it at a 90 degree angle. I know it's kind of hard to see, but you'll see it. Sorry, I really stripped the heck out of that sucker. All right, take my wires wrap it around so that it's really tight, right? So now, I hope you guys can see this. I'm trying to make it easy to see. Let's see if the soldering iron is actually working. I'm real happy about the way this thing's working. Not happy at all. Give me a second, guys. I am kind of not thrilled about this. That thing's pretty expensive. Let's see what the portable one does for me.
So I gotta wait for this to heat up for a second. I apologize, but yeah, I don't know what the deal is. Why do you dab it on the sponge? Uh, I take it cleans the solder off. Gives me a clean tip. You can also go into here too. Get the remnants off. Look with soldering irons there. So again, you'll see me. I'm just trying to see how that's tinning. It actually is tinning the tip of the soldering iron, and that's what I want to see. There we go. Now, what I'd like to do is see if I can somehow put this where you guys can see it. To set it up, but kind of awkward to do. Let's see if I can set this here again, put something heavy on it just to hold it in place. Take my tip, go underneath it, get some solder. Oh, look at that! Start following it down. $200 digital one didn't work, but the uh, power probe. Ah. I'm going to have to mess with that digital one. It's way off. I don't know if the temperature's off or what. But anyways, so there you go. You have a solid solder splice, right? And like I said, that's just me pulling the wire off because there's nothing there. Um, so then what you can do is um, you could actually, if you were doing this um, prior, you could actually take a piece of heat shrink and you could put it on the wire that you're connecting to and just make sure it's further up the line because the heat transfers through the wires. Let's see if that's big enough. No, we want to go a little bigger. Let's see. Yeah, no, you, again, you can also tape that. All right, I showed you that. But I like to use heat shrink. Now, now my connection goes over the solo wire and the joint that I just did. Now this time I use the, the torch. Again, be careful with the torch because it will burn the insulation, All right? So I'm just kind of holding it away, turning it around. See how it's starting to shrink? I never keep it on one spot too long. See how it starts to flame. Turn it off. And voila. Say your scooter light wires, this one here that I'm holding with both fingers. Here's your secondary wire coming from whether it be that alarm or whatever you're doing. Hadden lights, whatever you whatever you're doing. Um, you just made one hell of a splice that's never coming off okay never I mean this this thing they are solid soldering is by far uh, the best way to go it's my opinion um, you know you want to use butt splices and stuff go ahead it's fine I just wanted to show some of you guys some basic stuff so when you're soldering um, you want to make sure <laughs> that your soldering iron works um, but your really ideal temperature is anywhere between 375 and 400. As you can see, I don't know if you can, I have that thing at 480 and it was not heating the wire up. So I'll have to look into that when I'm done with this and see if there's something goofy going on with the temperature gauge. I haven't used it in a while, so that might be the reason. Um, the last thing I wanna go through is showing you something. It's pretty cool. So what I did was I took a four gauge wire, as you can see how thick that is, and I actually kind of made it down to an eight gauge. This is just for demonstration purposes. Um, it's 
for no other reason. If I was had eight, I don't have any eight gauge on me, or I would be doing it. But I want to make sure that that fits in there, and it does. So, what are you gonna do? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull a bunch of solder off. Okay. I'm gonna clip it. I'm gonna fold it up. You know, kind of like this. I don't know if that'll be enough. It might be. Clip it off if I need more. I'll use it. I'm gonna take my heat torch. Now, since this is such a small connector, I'm gonna use my heat torch. I'm actually gonna heat the copper. I'm gonna put this in there. And as you see, careful. It is melting the solder down into that. Then what I do, I don't know if that's enough or not. I'll put some more in. I normally like to just go at it, try to get some in there. Again, guys, please be careful. All right, there's plenty of solder in there. I'm gonna keep the heat on it. I'm gonna take it away. I'm gonna push my connector in there. Whoops. Again, this is not an eight gauge wire. So I kind of made it an eight gauge wire. Trying to twist it in there. try to cool off here for a second. <laughs> so what I actually did was, as you can see, there's a, yeah, it kind of sucks because it's not an eight gauge connector so it, or wire, so it doesn't really work real well. Um, what it did was I filled the bottom of the copper with, sorry, honey, <laughs> with, um, with uh, solder and I let the solder get molten hot and it turns into a liquid and then I actually stick the 8 gauge wire that's supposed to be an 8 gauge pretend 8 gauge wire it actually is way too big down into that and then as soon as it starts to cool off the solder actually grabs the wire strands and you have yourself a great connection so like if you were reconnecting a wire to the battery I'm actually trying to grab a piece of heat shrink here for you guys leave it sit there I'll have some 8 gauge wire probably in the next day or two uh, it's for the project for the scooter so you guys can see what I plan on doing take the wire Take your heat shrink, put it up over everything. I don't know if this is, I don't know if this is truly three to one. I kind of doubt it. Um, honestly, the best heat shrink you can buy is 3M. Uh, 3M makes probably about the best of everything when it comes to this stuff. They make key shrink connectors. They make all kinds of connectors, but they're hella expensive. Um, so this is supposed to be three to one, which means it shrinks three to one three times its original size. So let's go through and see if it really is 3-1. I'm not using the heat gun. I probably would under normal circumstances, but just for the sake of not running the video too long. Yeah. Well, actually it might be. Now what I'm going to do is, I think 
this. I'm just going to push on this to make sure it did shrink. And it did. It actually it actually did shrink. Maybe it is three to one. But now I have a ground lug, uh, a lug for the battery, um, any kind of lug like that. Yeah, I got a little extra solder on it. You can sand that off. You can break it off, actually. Um, but it was just for demo purposes to show you how you can put a copper lug on. Um, there are mechanical crimpers for these lugs, but they're expensive, they're hard to use, they're bulky. Uh, some people swear by them, they put like a hexagonal crimp on. Um, I find that obviously if I'm not in a hurry and I'm working on, you know, uh, making a connector for a battery or whatnot, you know, use the vise. I heat a lot of solder up, I go through it. Um, I get it about halfway filled, then I dunk my wire down in there and immediately take it off of the heat and it immediately sticks. And then I'll go and put my shrink around it and, and it's still a little warm. But yeah, that's not coming off. So you could do this for if you if 10 gauge, because that's what they use on the scooters. If you needed to replace a battery terminal or you know or a battery connector or something like that. Um, that's how you do it. Uh, now that's just a, a, a couple ways of doing solder and, and making some connections. Um, I hope it helped you. Um, if you have any comments or questions or anything like that, uh, go ahead and leave them. Um, I'm going to be doing some other electrical stuff here shortly with the scooter itself, um, which deals with um, changing out some of the wiring. So it should be interesting. I'm going to have to do that in like a series because of how long it's probably going to take to do. Uh, but it should be interesting. Um, and then we're going to move on to some uh, lighting, you know, maybe a relay, teach you guys how to do some relays, uh, some tricks for the lights, uh, maybe to give them more power um, or keep the low beam and high beam on. I think I mentioned that in the, in the introductions. Uh, and then we're going to move on to the uh, real OKO carburetors and switching it out. Um, uh, if you want to hang on a second, I'm going to stop for a second and then um, come right back and we're gonna, I'll show you the scooter real quick, okay? I haven't done that. And we'll fire it up and I'll let you take a listen to that real quick, all right? So I'll be right back.